This is the video lesson for conservation of momentum. The learning target for this lesson is, I am learning to define the conservation of momentum by identifying its formula. The success criteria for this lesson are, I can define the conservation of momentum, I can identify the formula for the conservation of momentum, and I can relate the conservation of momentum formula to real world examples. What is the law of the conservation of momentum? So the law says that momentum is conserved during collision. So the momenta of, ob of, an, of the objects in a system, so the momenta, that's just plural for momentum, of the objects in a system are the same before and after a collision, explosion, etc. So we have two objects, object one, object two, when they collide with each other, their momentum, their momentums, momenta, are the same before and after the collision. So not individually, but together as a system. So the system's, system's momentum are the same before and after the collision. And then this holds true, the law holds true as long as there is no outside force acting on the system. So no outside force acting on the system. So as long as we're just talking about what's going on within the system itself, so within these objects that we're talking about, as long as we're just talking about those, that system, so just the system itself, as long as there's no outside force acting on the system, the law holds true. All right, let's look at the formula for conservation of momentum. So this is for an elastic collision. So elastic collision means that the objects bounce off of each other. So we have one object bounces up, it collides with another object and the objects bounce off of each other. They go off in different directions. So we have M1 times V1 plus M2 times V2 equals M1 times V1 prime plus M2 times V2 prime. So M1 is the mass of object one. V1 is the velocity of object one before the collision. M2 is the mass of object two. V2 is the velocity of object two before the collision. V1 prime is the object, is the velocity of object one after the collision. That's what the prime says, is that it's after the collision. And then V2 prime, there's that prime again, is the velocity of object two after the collision. We'll look at an example of this so you can kind of get an idea of how this uh, formula actually works all together. Now let's look at the formula for conservation of momentum for an inelastic collision. So this is when you have two objects and the two stick together after the collision. So you end up having, instead of two objects, after the collision, you just have one object that moves as a, as a whole. You can think about this as like a really bad car crash. Uh, you have two cars that wreck into each other and it, after the wreck, you end up having only one car all mangled together. So you have M1, V1, multiply it together, plus M2, V2, multiply it together. And then on the other side of the collision, so that equals the mass of M1 plus M2 together times the new velocity. So M1 is equal to the mass of object one. V1 is the velocity of object one before the collision. M2 is the mass of object two. V2 is the velocity of object two before the collision. Then you have M1 plus two. So this is the combined masses of the objects after the collision. So the two masses come together, they collide, they stick together so that now their masses are combined. So they are M1 plus M2. And then we have the velocity of the objects after the collision. So they now have the same velocity because they're traveling together as one object. 
All right, we're going to look at an example here of pool balls that hit each other. And we're going to use our elastic collision formula. Okay, so we have a pool ball with a mass of 0 0.17 kilogram. If one ball is stationary and the other ball is in motion with a velocity of 2.5 meters per second in a positive direction, we want to know the momentum of the system before the balls hit each other and the momentum of the balls after they collide. All right, so we have M1 is equal to M2, and that's equal to 0 0.17 kilograms. So the masses of pool balls are the same. So we're going to say that V1 is equal to 0 meters per second, because that ball is at rest. V2 is equal to 2.5 meters per second. And I'm just going to call that positive 2.5 meters per second. Now we're looking for V1 prime. That's what we don't know. Now V2, if you know anything about billiard balls, when two balls clack into each other, when one is stationary and the other one is moving, the second ball just stops moving usually. So the second ball ends up with a velocity of zero meters per second. So we've got all the information we need, so let's plug it into our equation. So we have M1, so that's 0 0.17 kilograms times V1, which is zero meters per second, plus M2, which is 0 0.17 meters per second, times V2, which is 2.5 meters per second. Again, this is positive. And then that's equal to 0 0.17 kilograms times, this is what we don't know, so this is going to be our V1 prime plus 0 0.17 meters per second, or that's kilograms, kilograms, and then V2 is zero meters per second. Okay, so we have, on the left side of the equation, we have 0 0.425 kilogram meters per second, and that equals 0 0.17 kilograms times velocity one prime. So there's our prime. All right, so now we're just gonna divide both sides by this 0 0.17 kilograms. So those divide out on the right side, and the kilograms divide out on the right on the left side, and we're left with 2.5 meters per second is equal to V1 prime. So we've completely switched momentum. So the the momentum of the original uh, ball two has completely completely changed uh, over to ball one. So ball one now is moving at the exact same uh, speed, the exact same velocity that ball one was moving at and ball one, uh, that ball two was moving at and now ball two is completely stopped. All right, everybody, go out there and keep asking questions. It's how you learn new things.